Hey everyone, geophysicist Stefan Burns here. There is something that is incredible happening with our sun right now, something that perhaps we have not seen in decades. And there is some data to support that. The sunspot number has plummeted. It's dropped about 50%. If we look at the historic sunspot record, that is highly, highly anomalous. If we look at the most recent record going back to solar cycle 19, the late 1950s, early 1960s, and everything since then, we do not see a sunspot number drop like that during solar maximum ever. Now, one of the reasons why sunspot numbers have been dropping so precipitously over the past two weeks, really since May began, May of 2025, is because we've had these monster coronal holes on the sun. And this is the ninth rotation of this coronal hole. And when it first appeared on the sun for its ninth rotation like this, we assumed that it had shrunk a little bit from its eighth rotation and its seventh rotation. We'll look at the different rotations. But now that more of it has rotated in, we can see that in fact, it has grown to massive size. In fact, maybe the largest that has yet been with its ninth, ro ninth rotation. So sunspot numbers have been collapsing. Coronal holes have been get getting larger and larger. We can look at all nine rotations actually with this video here. It, this goes all the way back to the beginning of October. So this is October 13th and we see this coronal hole there is just a tiny little wisp. And then it got quite a bit bigger. We see that this one formed in the Southern Hemisphere that kind of converged together in December. Then they actually combined together with rotation number seven. We see this is very, very large. That was the biggest. Rotation eight was also very large. So I think slightly smaller though it did have this extent down there as well. So perhaps it was the same size. Now though, with rotation number nine, with this new lateral extent that's coming into view, I think this is the biggest rotation yet, or at least it is equivalent to eight and seven. So these coronal holes are getting anomalously large. This is the largest coronal hole that we've seen in a decade plus, and now it's done nine rotations around the sun. An interesting thing to note is that these coronal holes emit these high-speed streams into the solar wind, and when those hit the Earth, there's a variety of geophysical effects. We're not gonna explore that in today's video, but there is a strong connection between these high-speed stream impacts and enhancements of severe weather on the planet, and also with high-magnitude earthquakes and kind of an increase in global seismic energy release. And so these have real world implications for us, not just beyond, okay, the sun is going from solar maximum to solar minimum or something like that. We're in the descending phase now. These have real world geophysical effects. This is the ninth rotation. It's been loading the earth now nine times with its high speed stream impact. That energy has been coming in. We just had a G2 geomagnetic storm from this impact, stronger than expected. That was also another solar storm dynamic stacked on top of that. But lo and behold, May 17th, we had a pretty significant solar storm. So our sunspot numbers have gone down precipitously, very likely because these coronal holes don't have sunspots in that surface area. And what is a coronal hole? Before we move on, this is in part of the solar corona, which is the outermost atmosphere of the sun. Just like the earth has an atmosphere, and as you go further out, it goes lower density. It's the same deal with the sun. As you move further away from the surface of the sun, the density decreases. It's all basically plasma, which is the fourth state of matter, very highly vibrational. You have these protons and electrons splitting off from each other. They're ions or charge carriers. Now they are under the influence of magnetic fields. They generate electric fields, whereas a neutral molecule is inert in, in some aspects to electromagnetic energy. And so when you have a uh, solar maximum, you have a, a lot of stuff happening with the corona. You can have these coronal mass ejections. You have a big explosion on the surface, blasts off part of the corona. A coronal hole is where there is no corona. Basically, the, the plasma density goes way down. The temperature goes way down because you don't have the highly vibrational plasma of the corona there. And the magnetic field is open, so it emits out into space rather than looping back in on itself like what you get with sunspots. And you do get coronal holes to form more often during the descending phase of solar maximum. 
And it looks like we're really quickly dropping into that descending phase, or at least we're definitely jumping out of a period of more maximal activity with this May. Because back in August of 2024, we had our highest monthly sunspot count at 216. Now we're about to drop down to under 100 for the month. And in fact, let me show you that. It's really wild. Here we have our intensity grams, both for Earth facing and also for the far side of the sun. We have the solar orbiter probe right now exactly 180 degrees opposite the Earth on the other side of the sun. So we have perfect coverage right now, which does not happen all that often, of sunspots on the sun. And so we base our sunspot count as it relates to solar maximum and solar minimum, uh, these, you know, these solar cycles, we base that sunspot count off of what we see on the Earth facing side. I'm sure in probably 10, 20 years, we'll have a lot more probes and we'll have some new way of categorizing sunspot numbers for the sun by looking at it holistically all at once. But we have almost no sunspots on the Earth facing side right now. As you can see, our sunspot number right now, daily estimates about 70. In fact, actually it's below 70. The, the monthly estimate for May is about 70. Whereas just last month we were over 140. So we see that we almost have no sunspots on the earth facing side. If you look to the far side, we do have one big sunspot there. Uh, that has been stable for a while now. That will rotate and reach the earth facing side in about eight days based off its position. But in general, not seeing much else. And so our sunspots right now are incredibly low and we don't have really much rotating in to let's say have this sunspot number catch up for the rest of May. And therefore it's very likely that our sunspots are gonna stay very, very low for the entire month of May unless we get new flux to push out of the sun and just generate new sunspots just spontaneously and suddenly, it looks like this sunspot number for May is gonna be exceptionally low. Here is our daily sunspots. Let's just look at this really quick and get a sense of what I'm talking about. At the very end of April, we went up to 200 for our daily count. We hit that twice, went back down. We've been in kind of like this regular rhythm like this, and then it collapsed. It just absolutely collapsed. Our normal cycle of uh, our monthly sunspots is just really, really depressed right now because of these coronal holes, which again, have these really powerful dynamics as it relates to the Earth geophysically. So here, beginning of May, dropped under 150, only rebounded to 100. This blue line right there is our estimate for the month. And these are all estimated sunspot numbers. They'll, they'll lock in the final accurate number at the end of the month. But we see that this is 100, 90, 80, 70. We're only at 70, whereas before, if we go to our next graphic to look at all the sunspots that we've had for a while now, going back to solar cycle 19, we see that we were up here and we were basically bouncing around 150 for like uh, six months or so. So we had some under 150, we had some over 150. In general, our average for the past six months, I think it's like six, seven months, has been 100 sunspots for the monthly count. Here we have solar cycle 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 was weak, 25 has been stronger. And so this solar maximum came in sooner than expected. The original estimate from NASA was July, 2025, and they expected it to only be as strong as solar cycle 24. So it's been stronger. There's that August count 216, but now look at where we're likely to finish May. Right now, the estimate's actually at 70. So I put a little bit of a benefit of the doubt and made it 75. And I put that mark right in the position that, you know, it will go. So, once June rolls around and we get this sunspot count, very likely it's going to be, almost certainly it's going to be under 100. It's very, very likely actually going to be under 80, under 75, maybe even at 70 or lower. And so just imagine that line going down like this and now look at this graphic and you'll see that that is completely, completely bizarre and anomalous. We don't see any other massive drops in sunspot numbers like that during a solar maximum period. The solar cycle 19, do you see any drops going like down like crazy? I mean, we do get one there. You, you'll notice here, for example, um, or I saw here, solar cycle 20, we get quite a drop, but that's actually over the course of like three, four, five, six months right there. This is not one single drop. And we do see, I mean, we see volatility during solar maximum but we don't see it to this extent. So we are seeing an incredible amount of sunspot volatility at this moment in time 
during the maximum phase. Solar maximum lasts about three years. This is about three years, and then the descending phase is about three years, minimum is three years, and then the descending phase is about three years. In general, there's a variability with solar cycles, about 8.5 to 14 years for the entire cycle. Um, but this number, if we don't bounce out of that really quickly, that's definitely indicating that we are in the descending phase of solar cycle 25, and that would be much sooner than expected. Uh, because we were kind of expecting that to be around the end of 2026 going into 2027. Very unlikely we're going to beat that sunspot number count for August of 2024. We could get a double peak. We see that here with solar cycle 24. Things went up, they went down, they went back up for a double peak. We see that with solar cycle 23 where we kind of had this cool off period in the center, rebounded back up. So it's not like we've never seen that dynamic before, but again, to see a sunspot drop this much is crazy. And again, it's mostly because of these coronal holes. It's not a one-to-one -one connection. If you have a coronal hole that you're not gonna have sunspots, but in general, the, the more that these coronal holes take up the surface of the sun, the less sunspots you'll have. So here we have our coronal holes for the month of May. You'll notice it's not just this one extremely massive, epic coronal hole, We've had others, so uh, I, and this will recycle soon, but here's the big one that's rotating in right now. That's what we first saw, and then we see it get much, much, much bigger as more of it's revealed. But here we have some coronal holes. This one was actually quite large. This is like a moderately sized coronal hole there. We do see a lot of activity that we've had. There's a coronal hole. We see it actually close up, right? There's a coronal hole. They can close up and then also expand, but this one has been incredibly active and alive now for more than six months. So absolutely wild what is happening with the sun at this moment in time. And uh, one of the other things that's occurring right now too, which is fascinating, is that right now we're in the middle of a Uranus Kazemi. So Uranus is uh, the planet out at 20 astronomical units. And because we are orbiting around the sun, the sun is moving, right? We, we have these planets go conjunct the sun from our perspective once a year. Mercury is more often than that. Venus is uh, a different frequency, but the outer gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, they all go, go Kazemi once a year. In general, what we see is during these Kazemis is you have a bit more activity from the sun, or it just seems that there's some sort of effect on solar activity. This is a, a, a relationship that's still being explored. But with the last Uranus Kazemi, from May, oh, it was on May 12th of 2024. From May 10th to 12th, we had a G5 geomagnetic storm. With this Uranus Kazemi, because uh, that was yesterday, May 17th, we just had a G2 geomagnetic storm that had quite a strong shock impact. And so uh, we are just now having finished that Uranus Kazemi and it's now moving away. And in general, there's kind of a time window around those energies to express themselves. So that is active right now at this moment in time. Um, but in general, things have been uh, really uh, exceptional as it relates to the sun with this coronal hole now probably being the largest that's ever been with its ninth rotation. So now we have to start thinking, is it going to show up for rotation number 10? Rotation number 11, when is it going to close up? Uh, and like, we just don't know because we've really never seen dynamics like this. As far as I know, looking through the historic record, certainly we've had big coronal holes before, but again, as I showed you with that dramatic drop in sunspots and just the sheer size and duration in, across time of this coronal hole, I don't think we've ever seen this dynamic before. And if we go back one more time, to our sunspot graphic, you'll see that solar cycle 19, solar cycle 21, 22, 23 were very strong. Uh, the average sunspot count during maximum for like an average solar cycle is 175. And so solar cycle 20 was below average. These were about average or above. Solar cycle 19 was very strong, one of the strongest that we've ever observed. Solar cycle 24 was quite weak. So we're in this kind of dynamic period where it's like, well, are we still in heightened solar activity? This is known as the modern maximum. This was a modern maximum period, just like you have a grand solar minimum where you have uh, sunspot numbers basically go to zero. You can also have a solar, ma like a grand solar maximum. So this is the grand solar modern maximum. And now with solar cycle 20, 
25 being stronger than 24, we're rebounding out of that, but now we see this massive increase in volatility as it relates to sunspots and these coronal holes, and we've been seeing increases, dramatic increases in severe weather across the world and also in uh, earthquake activity since rotation number seven. So I wanted to bring that to your attention that we have some absolutely crazy dynamics at play right now with the sun because this coronal hole as it's rotated further in, we've seen more of it. It's actually even bigger than it ever has been before. We were thinking that it was starting to close up. That has not been the case. So if you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening with our sun in terms of solar activity, what's happening with space weather in general, the effects on our planet geophysically, the energies that we experience, also how planetary resonances and planetary geometry affects all that. For example, this G2 geomagnetic storm that we had on May 17th, that was forecasted on this channel more than six weeks ago. We've been talking about that for a long time. Long time viewers know that. I have records of that through all my videos, so you can check them out. That was based on planetary geometry. So how that affects the energetics of our solar system, even cosmic forces and more, then you can subscribe to the channel I've been your host, Stefan Burns, geophysicist, space weatherman, and more. Thank you so much for watching. Wishing all of you well. Happy Sunday, the perfect day to talk about the sun. I'll see you all very soon.